The Gini coefficient is a numerical statistic used to measure income inequality in a society. It was developed by Italian statistician and sociologist Corrado Gini in the early 1900s. In order to calculate the Gini coefficient, it's important to first understand the Lorenz curve, which is a graphical representation of income inequality in a society. A hypothetical Lorenz curve is given here. Once the Lorenz curve is constructed, calculating the Gini coefficient is pretty straightforward. You'll notice here that we've labeled the area between the Lorenz curve and the 45 degree diagonal that represents perfect income equality as A, and then we've labeled everything else that is below the Lorenz curve but still within this triangle here as area B. The Gini coefficient is in simply area A divided by the total of A plus B, which is just this whole triangle. Sometimes the Gini coefficient is represented as an index or a percentage, in which case you would just take A divided by A plus B and multiply it by 100%. Now because we can say that as this Lorenz curve gets further and further away from this 45 degree diagonal, we're seeing more and more income inequality in a society it's true that higher numbers for this Gini coefficient corresponds to higher levels of income inequality and lower numbers for the Gini coefficient corresponds to lower degrees of income inequality or equivalently higher degrees of income equality. In order to mathematically calculate these areas A and B, it's usually necessary to come up with an equation for the Lorenz curve and then use calculus to calculate either the area underneath the Lorenz curve or between the Lorenz curve and this 45 degree diagonal. For most practical purposes when you're looking to calculate the Gini coefficient, these areas will most likely be given to you or there will be cases where they're reasonably easy to calculate without using calculus. We can get a lower bound on possible values of the Gini coefficient by envisioning a scenario where society has perfect income equality. If income in a society were perfectly equal, we'd have the bottom 10% of earners having 10% of the income, the bottom 25% of earners having 25% of the income, and so on. In other words, our Lorenz curve would just be the same as the 45 degree diagonal that we've been talking about. In this case, there wouldn't be any area between the Lorenz curve and that diagonal, so the area A that we talk about in our Gini coefficient would be equal to zero. And then we'd have area B as this entire triangle here. Therefore, if we were to calculate this quantity, we would just end up with A over A plus B just being zero over zero plus B, which is just zero. So it's helpful to remember that if we have perfect income equality, we have a Gini coefficient of zero, which is the lowest possible value for the Gini coefficient. We can construct an upper bound on our Gini coefficient by envisioning society that has perfect income inequality. In this context, perfect income inequality would just be a situation where one person makes all of the money. In that setup, the Lorenz curve would look like a right angle here because until you added in that last person in the population, your share of income would be flat at zero. So we'd have zero, 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 and so on and so forth. And then once we added in that last person who's making all the money, our Lorenz curve would jump up to 100% of the total income in the society. So with perfect income inequality, our Lorenz curve would be this kinked right angle line here, and this area A between the Lorenz curve and the 45 degree diagonal would be the entire triangle that we see here. The implication of that is that our area B that we referenced in the earlier diagrams would then be zero. Therefore, when calculating the Gini coefficient, again, we're doing A over A plus B, but then b is just equal to zero, so we get a over a plus zero, which is just one. So when we have perfect income inequality in a society, 
we get a Gini coefficient equal to 1. In reality, societies experience neither perfect income equality nor perfect income inequality. So we end up with Lorenz curves that have this typical bow down shape as we see here. The implication of that is that in practice, our Gini coefficients are going to be strictly between 0 and 1, or if we're expressing them as indexes or percentages, strictly between 0 and 100 or 100%.